Hi, this is Scott Bradfield. This is the Advanced Creative Writing course at City Lit. Every term we have a competition, which I, I think of as the, the combination of the Hunger Games meets the Dead Poet Society, which is where our students are supposed to fight to the death to ask a question that I will answer in the midterm lecture. We had a lot of spoil sports this year who just wouldn't get violent, and I, I don't know what I don't know what to say. But at the end of the, as all, all the dust settled, we had lots of good questions this term, and I selected one that was a bit unusual. Normally, I focus on uh, technique, uh, ways of writing, showing how people write in good writers, show, showing examples of good writers writing, in order to answer your questions. Uh, this term, we had a question which kind of came out of left field. Normally, I don't. Uh, I try to mix everybody together. But I, the question was about the profession of writing. And I thought I would try to tackle that in a 10-minute lecture, because that's about as much as I know about the profession of writing. I've often told my students over the years that I, I do consider myself a good teacher of, of technique and explaining the basics of narrative, because most of my students just are thinking wrong. They, they know how to write, but they're thinking this stuff they learned from O-levels or from you know, watching the culture show on BBC and all this rubbish that they hear, and they aren't remembering the basic pleasure of writing stories and telling stories that they learned when they were kids. So I, I, the techniques I think I can explain. But I also always tell my students that don't ever listen to me for business advice. I'm a terrible businessman when it comes to writing. And at the same time, I thought, well, why don't I give them all my business advice? And you can pretty much either ignore it or, or, or adopt it or, or use parts of it. Um, as a writer, my personal attitude towards writing is learning how to write well. You shouldn't be thinking, my, all my students are asking, how do I sell my novel? They haven't learned how to write the novel yet, but they're only talking about selling the novel. The first, your first job is not to sell your novel. Your first job is to write the novel and to write a good novel. Now, what you do with the novel after it's written there's a number of ways of trying to get it published, but you really there's there's not even point, any point of thinking about it if you can't get the novel written. And writing a novel requires one thing: is you need to write a novel or a book of stories that gives you pleasure. It's, that, that, it's not that hard either. You, you just have to write books and stories that you like, and stop thinking about this hypothetical novel that you think might make money, which is never a way of of writing or doing anything. So the first thing is, is to learn how to write, and that's the first business of a writer, is to learn how to write, and to write good stories, and to be clear, to ignore all the rubbish you read in The Guardian or whatever Will Self says. Just ignore all these people, and just read good writers, not the rubbish that you're, you're told is good, and you will learn how to write well. Now, the writer has a number of things that they have to take care of. <clears throat> the first one is to pay their bills, to uh, deal with a mortgage, to... Um, to, to make dinner while they're writing their novels. And I don't have a perfect answer to any of that, but I have some suggestions. One of the things you need to think about as a, as a young writer, and most of you are younger than me, or as an old writer like me, is you should be looking for every opportunity to write for money. Now, there aren't a lot, there, there's, there, there's dwindling opportunities to write for money in, over, the, over the course of my life and my career, but they're still out there. And one of the things you need to start thinking about is, as a writer, you need to you need to make some money as a writer. You need to have a crappy job. You need to be act as a work in a bookshop or work in a restaurant or whatever the stuff you do. Uh, teaching, I taught for you. I, I still teach to pay the bills. <clears throat> and you need a job to pay the bills. But you also need to look for opportunities to write for money. Now, there's a lot more of those in Europe than there are in America. And there's still, there's still some in America, but there's more in Europe. One of the things you can think about is looking for your local newspapers, your local websites, places that need a book reviewer. Writing book reviews is a good way of making money as a writer. It's also a good way of getting your name around. If you're in London, you may not be able to get someone to, to hire you as a reviewer, if they don't know who you are and you've never published before, but you might actually get them to hire you as a temp. Work as a temp, 
work if you're gonna if you're gonna need to make money, work as a temp and ask to work in, in the newspapers. If you're working as a temp in the newspapers, you almost become a professional writer immediately because most of the newspapers in London will hire almost anybody that's in town that's next to them to write things. And one of the things they don't care about is the reviews, the book reviews, or travel reviews, or movie or sometimes the movie reviews are a little bit choicer because you know you get free tickets. But the um, opportunities to write as a temp at a newspaper is, are good. They're, the better you're better off with local local rags, local newspapers. Uh, if you're out again, if you're way off in the Midlands or you're in Scotland, um, if there's local newspapers, local uh, advertisers, call them up. Say I'd like to review some books for you. You'd be surprised how many of them will say, "Oh, really? We need a book review, or we don't even have a book review." You, you, there, there are people who will will may may hire you simply because you came up with the idea. You can never, as a writer, you can never worry about being told no. As a writer, you're going to spend your whole life being told no. No one wants you around. No one wants to hire you. No one wants to publish your books. When you publish your books, no one wants to read your books, unless you become incredibly famous. So just get used to being told no, and get up the next morning and try a couple other places. Most people will tell you no. They'll tell you no from morning till night. Call them up again. Try another newspaper. Wait six months. Call the same place. See if there's a new, uh, new editor. And, and keep looking for work. There's lots of opportunities online to publish book reviews and publish little, little pieces about books. You can go on you can go on Amazon. You can run a you can run a series of, of reviews there, and get your name around there as a reviewer. Um, being a reviewer is very useful because people start to recognize you as a writer. You've written something. It's been published somewhere. Anything that distinguishes you from everybody in the world is a good step forward. There's, there's, the world is filled with people who want to write. Many of them have never written anything. So even if you say, start to develop uh, 100, 200 reviews on Amazon or on some other website, I don't know the websites very well, and your name starts to get around and you start reviewing books, you know, don't do hatchet jobs. Tell people about good books that you like and you will start to distinguish yourself from everybody else. Publishing early excerpts from books that you're working on, publishing short stories, anywhere that might pay you is a good idea, but sometimes just being paid nothing, having it published is a good step forward. So the writer needs to be looking all the time for opportunities to write and to publish and to get a little bit of money. And a little bit of money is about the best you're gonna look for. Your best you're going to expect. So do it. Um, it will also help you as you go along to have, when you have your novel finished or you finish your first book of stories, you'll, you'll, you will start to distinguish yourself from all these other people. And if you start sending books out to agents or to publishers, you can say, well, I've been writing for, you know, the past six months or two years. I've been the, the I've written book reviews for the Midlands Gazette or something. You may think that means nothing, but to a publisher, that means you're different from everybody else. That's always good. Some people, I, I've run an MFA program. I've been worked on MA and MFA programs. Going for MFAs and MA degrees at, at good universities is a way of distinguishing yourself, and sometimes they will offer you teaching work. Not as much in the UK as they do in the US, but you can sometimes get some teaching. And I put myself through college, and I supported myself for years, as a, as a graduate student and as a professor teaching literature. Teaching is not the best job for writers. I'm going to warn you this right now. Uh, it, it's, it's often the better paying of all the jobs out there. It's much more dependable than writing book reviews or essays for newspapers. But it is the sort of job that you take home with you. As a writer, one of the things you really need to do is find jobs you do not care about after you go home. It's a very important, important thing to think about. If you can make your money doing a crappy, working in a bookstore, working in a bar, working, um, you know, working in a supermarket, something that you go home and you don't even worry about what happened. You just don't care. You go to bed, you wake up the next morning, and you can write without thinking about it. Whereas things like uh, teaching or good careers or careers that have you know importance to them or 
you have a future in those careers, you start worrying about your bosses and how someone else got a promotion and blah, blah, blah. You start thinking about stuff you shouldn't. And the writer needs to have a certain level, uh, area of selfishness to just sort of sit and do their work. Um, the, uh, the last thing I'll suggest as a writer is that uh, you should never, ever think about, worry too much about writing for money. If you're writing a book review or travel articles are very good for some of you, uh, writing uh, any type of local, even writing letters to your local newspaper about books or cultural events will start you on the road to having a published career. And you should never worry too much about the quality of the work you produce for journalism or for money. Do your best and try to write really well, uh, but you're saving, you're saving all your worries and anxieties about being a good writer for your novels and stories. The, this, these are jobs. They're simply jobs that are teaching you how to produce good work quickly okay, and to be able to stay at home, which is the most important thing for a writer. A writer should not be going to the office every day because you, you, you just can't get any work done if you go to the office. You're better off lying on the sofa. You are much better off lying on the sofa all day than you are working in an office for, I don't care, 100,000 pounds a year because you won't get any thinking done. You won't get any work done. So if you get some good hack jobs or some, some, some opportunities to write, to write clearly for venues that will pay you, just do your best and save all the stress and anxieties of good writing for that period of time that every day you're going to have to save for yourself. Five, ten minutes, an hour, two hours, when you're going to write as well as you can for yourself. And the bad advice I have for everybody, which is the advice I follow for myself all the time, is those hours by yourself, you write for yourself. You write good books, you write stuff you like. Do not sell books to publishers that you have not written. Do not sell books on contract. Do not agree to write novels that you don't really want to write. Write the books you want to write, and then you try to sell them. That, that's advice I was given many years ago, and it's the advice I live by now. Write for yourself, because that's the pleasure of writing. Okay? That's everything I know about professionalism, and you will not get rich listening to my professional advice. Okay, good night, and I'm sorry, this, uh, this is, the, this is the, the summer of 2015. We're doing three or four of these every year, and um, I'm going to progressively get older, but I'm sometimes going to run old, old uh, lectures from previous advanced courses. So I'm hoping that in 30 or 40 years, the future generations will hear this, uh, I hope, interesting lecture. Okay, good night.